Hey everybody, today, July 20th, when I'm uh, recording this little video here, uh, is the two-year anniversary of the death of the great Michael Brooks, who was an absolute giant in this online left podcast YouTube media space, and uh, no doubt uh, would have gone on to make a big splash elsewhere uh, had he lived long enough to. And uh, at the time he died, I knew this was a great loss, not just for our little community here, but really for the world. And I, I, I know that sounds like a big thing to say, but I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. He was the guy who had uh, not only the conviction and the intelligence and the charisma to emerge as a true leader in any new progressive left movement, um, but as you will see in this clip, he had a very specific vision of where he wanted the left to go. And so a lot of people have been posting a lot of clips of Michael's um, today. Uh, and I came across this one, which I remember watching when it first made the rounds. Uh, and I thought I would share it with you guys. This is actually not from his show. This is from a panel that he was speaking at. Uh, but it's really fantastic. And it really, I think, perfectly sums up... Um, what he meant to this movement um, and uh, his legacy and, and what we can learn uh, from him moving forward. Love without power is sentimental and anemic, yep. and power without love is abusive and corrosive. I'm paraphrasing. Yep. And that was when I saw it, I thought, well, here, okay, we know the left-wing Dr. King. Well, here's the Machiavellian Dr. King, and I love it. I want the left to have Machiavelli so that we can have the strategy, the ruthlessness, the clarity to actually win these battles and be ruthless with institutions. And then I want us to learn how to be really kind to each other, welcoming of a broad set, and actually have a movement that has the capacity to do that. That's why the cancel stuff is relevant that Katie brought up, because it's a stand-in for this eliminationism of other humans, which is neoliberalism enacted. And it's also a contradiction from when we get utopian. It's beautiful. We're, we're the people who sit around and we say, why don't we have a world where there's no prisons? Okay. <laughs> That's a radical fucking statement. That's a real thing, and we should take it seriously. But then, on the other hand, oh, well, these people could never be part of our coalition because they made a mistake or said something. Like, it's a contradiction in what we're enacting. So. What I get that I hope is in the realm of answering your question from this Dr. King clip was left wing, spiritual, but also with a vision of power. And if we can synthesize those things, I think we will speak to the highest impulses of this country. We will be welcoming to people and we will win. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, what Brooks was able to do that I don't think anybody else in this space can do, as you saw in that clip there when he talks about cancel culture and how, yes, the canceling of people is, as he puts it so well, a stand-in for the eliminationism of people, which is neoliberalism at its core. Uh, what Brooks was able to do that, like I said, I don't think anybody else in this space can, is reject the excesses of woke politics while at the same time showing zero tolerance for actual bigotry. And that, unfortunately, is a very tough line to toe. It really shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Um, I like to think I'm good at it. Um, I'm sure there are others who like to think they're good at it, but this online space is just so polarized, even within the so-called left. It's so factionalized, and it has such a tendency, such a knee-jerk tendency to move towards a cancel culture kind of environment uh, that that becomes that kind of nuance uh, becomes very, very difficult to communicate in a way that translates to people. And Michael just did that effortlessly and flawlessly. And I really believe that part of the reason why this online left space has gotten so divided and so factionalized and so nasty is because he's no longer a presence here. I really believe that. 
I really believe that he is so sorely missed in that way because he was the guy you can look to to just strike that balance without even trying and with full confidence. I mean, the guy had such swag. Uh, You know, I mean, he was just fantastic in that way. And so that is what's really, that's the thing that right now, at least in the short term, I think we feel the most from him not being here. Because he was the guy who had a, like I said, a very specific vision of where we needed to go to not only uh, express a politics and a spirituality of love and compassion, but he also had a vision of obtaining and wielding power and understood the imperative of that in a way that I think very few on the left understand. And this goes hand in hand with what he said about the cancel culture thing, right? We how how do you push a radical agenda, a radical left agenda, a utopian agenda, but at the same time push people out of that vision for fucking up and saying the wrong thing or tweeting the wrong thing, right? It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. There is no way to build power in that way. Certainly no way to build power by democratic means, which is of course the way we need to do it, right? I mean, if, if, if we don't believe in that, then really we wouldn't be talking and writing and sharing ideas. We'd be taking up arms, right? We don't want to do that, right? We believe in doing this peacefully and democratically. And um, like I said, he just had a vision of how to do that. And he, he was a real leader in that sense. Um, he was more than just a commentator, a personality, uh, and by the way, he was a brilliant commentator and just a brilliant broadcaster. I mean, absolutely fantastic on the mic. Uh, you know, he would outshine Sam Cedar all the time. Sam is, you know, <laughs> Sam is always just as as I am always, uh, um, uh, stopping, starting, stammering. Michael, never. Michael, just get on that mic. And it was just smooth. No hesitations, no restarts, no nothing. He was brilliant on the mic, brilliant as a commentator, brilliant in this space. But more than that, he was a builder, he was a teacher, and he was a leader. And um, there's still just so much to learn from him. It is just such a crying shame uh, that he's not with us anymore. But uh, I hope you can share that clip around with people because that that is really, uh, th- th- that's, that's where it's at. Simple as that. That's where, that's where it's at. He knew what was up. And... Um, he knew how to, how to take us there, and uh, with him not here, we're going to have to do it ourselves, I guess. But, uh, yeah, share that around. Thanks. Please clap.